good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be getting into some of the gems of the collection. All right, these are five WWE figures that I could not live without, right? These are five figures that I look near and dear into my collection. I'm like, damn, Brad, that's a good football figure right there. You know, it's just those figures that I really, really enjoy posing around with, that I really, really enjoy just picking up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get the most fulfillment and enjoyment out of these figures that we're going to get into today. Of course, I had to put up my champions, my pick-fed champions, because these are my honorable mentions right here. All of my pick-fed champions are right here. I think this is all of them. I could be mistaken. But you guys get the point, right? I mean, I, these are some of my favorite figures to pose around with and just some that I absolutely adore. And, you know, you couldn't live without your champions, right? So I have my champions represented right here for honorable mentions. But, guys, let's get into some of the other figures that just... Uh, these are not in any particular order. These are just figures that I love to just pick up and I just get the most enjoyment out of whether it's with customization or fixing up or posing or playing with whatever the case is these are the figures that bring me the most enjoyment and just that I could not live without that I could not continue on my collecting journey on my MDT figure channel journey without so let's go ahead and get into it guys if I had to narrow it down to five only figures that I could probably collect for the rest of time these would be those five people these would be these five figures so let's go ahead and get into it let's start out first guys with a figure that I think everybody knows that I just love so very much and that's got to be the Ultimate Edition Ronda Rousey. Now, you'll also like to know, this is the only women's figure on the list, simply because I, I, I just don't see another figure that holds a candle right now. I think what it has to do a lot with is the posability and just how good the figure feels in the hand and posing around. Also, I love Ronda Rousey, so it just comes full circle. I really enjoy the figure a lot. Uh, you know, it can put you in the hip flexor. It can sneak in the middle of the night and choke you out. So, I, I just love this figure. I adore this figure. It's the best women's figure they've ever made and I'll fight you for it. I'll fight you for it. So I could not make the list without Ronda Rousey, guys. I also, what the, what is with the lighting, Brad? I need, I need better lighting. I, I hate it. It's dumb. It's ridiculous. I got 17 lamps and not enough freaking nice lighting. I don't know. Let me know what you think of the lighting. Also, try to predict the rest of the figures down below. Before we started, I hope you, I hope you left a prediction. But there's my first one. Ronda Football Rousey. I just can't get enough out of that figure. Next up, guys, we're getting into another Ultimate Edition. It is going to be Ultimate Edition Brock Lesnar. Love this figure, again, for the same reasons that I love Ronda Rousey. I think that uh, just overall, just so fun. Like, I just find myself picking this up, and I'm like, damn, bro, look what I can do. Look at this. And I don't know. I just love the double-jointed arms and stuff. I really, really wish that every elite figure had double-jointed arms. If every elite figure had double-jointed arms, Brad, it'd be over with. It really would be. Of course, the torso could be better, but for sure, the I think what makes these two Ultimate Editions so good is because it's seamless. Like, you don't even see see the articulation, and I know the ab crunch isn't the best, but you get the diaphragm pivot, you get all the good things. If it had a soft tissue or a soft plastic rubber or whatever for the waist, and they were like the AEW figures, oh my good God in heaven, Brad. But I just love these figures. If you guys missed MDT Live episode number 16, I believe, definitely go check that out, but this figure is just super fun to pose around with, guys. I, I can't get enough of these two. The these are the two best Ultimate Editions, in my opinion, if I had to sit here and think about it. I also love the Demon and Balor, but I think the Brock Lesnar can pose around a little bit more. It's on ball joints. It doesn't get a stiffy, liffy leg. Its accessories may not be as good as Demon Finn Balor, and I may not like Brock as much as Finn Balor, but the, this figure right here is phenomenal. Next up, guys, we have someone that I don't know. You may you may or may not can predict who else is on this list. Now that I'm looking at it, Brad, I may have six. I may have top six, so get off me, alright? Damn. But getting into it next, guys, is going to be John Cena. The short shorts John Cena. Okay, so you guys see this right here. This is the Elite 40 John Cena. You guys can see we do have the fix up right here with the uh, the Enzo Amore shoes because it ties into the rest of the attires with the colors and the shorts and the hey hey it hurts me. But as you guys can see like this figure can just really really pose around. I love posing this guy around it's on ball joints as well. The posability of these short shorts John Cena's is really great. And not only that guys I love making fix ups with it like you get black shorts you can you know pair it with different arm bands and different things from different nature to give them fantasy gears and things of that nature another one right here red arm bands ties into the shoes and the camo and everything like that. Just really fun fix-ups you can do. Really fun customs and fantasy attires and things. And I don't know. I just love mixing and matching shoes and shorts and armbands and head sculpts. And, and on top of the, the customization and the fixing up ability of these John Cena figures, John Cena is my favorite wrestler of all time. He's the GOAT. And these figures are really fun to pose around. Again, like he was MDT champion for a, a, a while and uh, I always loved posing him around in the pick fed. Like it, it's just a joy, man. Really good stuff right there 
there. Can't get enough of the John Cena's, and I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'd have to, you know, I gotta live on with the John Cena figures. I'm gonna scoot this ish back a little bit because I felt like it was getting on my nerves. Oh, and here's one more to grow on. There's another John Cena fix up. I don't know, man. Just a really fun figure to fix up. And look, you get the Ghostbusters gray shorts in there. Just so many different things. Next up on the list, guys, is there seven? God dang. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I think there's seven, but F it. You know what? Seven figures. You know, it's two more, all right? You get two little honorable mentions there. Anyways, guys, moving on up the list. We gotta put Finn Balor. Finn Balor's figures are great. I love them. I really love them. Finn Balor's probably one of my favorite talents in the world right now. And what I love about him is his customization. Same thing with John Cena. You can do so many different fix-ups. You can compare different head sculpts and stuff. Putting the red kick pads on this demon here. Adding the white kick pads to the top talents with the smiley Finn head sculpt. So many different things I can do with his new NXT heel Elite 82 figure. And then you have the element of the demon and playing that into the pick fed. There's so many creative things you can do with Finn Balor and things. He can be a baby face. He can be a heel. He's just one of the goats, man. He's one of my favorites and uh, all the, the different customization and stuff is great. And his figures pose around and he's got a great move set and things like that. And that ties into the rest of the figures as well. Just a really good versatility is really big in these figures on this list. So versatility is going to take you a long way. Finn Balor had to be on the list, Brad. Wouldn't have it another way. Demon Finn Balor, regular Finn Balor, fart bag Finn Balor, football Finn Balor. Does not matter. Did that rhyme? Unintentional. Next up, guys, is going to be Jeff Hardy, right? We got to get into Jeff Hardy. Now, what makes Jeff Hardy so great is very similar to Finn Balor. You know, I can I can mix and match parts, right? I can take different figures, pair them with different figures, put creative things on different figures, paint up different head sculpts. The, the fantasy attires for Jeff Hardy are probably my favorite. I'd say Jeff Hardy or Finn Balor are probably my favorites there. I also like the uh, another person on this list, but the Punisher Jeff Hardy face paint with the rest of the, you know, the white and the all black gear and the black attire and the black trench coat and everything was really excellent with the white gauges. Then you have the clown attire over here with the rainbow hair and everything. The exposure's really high for some reason. Really pissing me off. Get out of here. But I don't know, man. It's another one, one of those things where he, his figures aren't the most poseable around. I'd say this one's more poseable for some reason. I kind of changed the parts or this one just doesn't have the problems that the other ones have. It just feels really good in the hand compared to others. Not sure what that's about. Maybe it's just the Punisher fantasy attire just flowing through his body. Gave him superpowers, Brad. I'm not sure, even though Punisher doesn't even have superpowers. I don't know. I just know that, uh, you know, doing those face paints, doing those different attires, mixing, matching parts is one of my favorite things about collecting. So without Jeff Hardy, I wouldn't be able to express that creativity all the way through, and that would kill me. So I really enjoy that. That makes it worth it to me, and I had to put Jeff Hardy on the list. Couldn't move on with it, and plus he's one of my favorites of all time as well. Next to these guys, and uh, yeah, that's that's why Jeff Hardy's on the list. Next up, guys, we have sort of another honorable mention. I gotta put Dolph Ziggler in there, right? Dolph Ziggler's figures, if anybody knows, you know, Brad. His figures are really, really good. All of them are on ball joints except two, I think. The Elite 5, the Elite 13, maybe one more. I'm pretty sure that's the two that are not on ball joints, but the rest are on ball joints. His attires are really bright. I really like this head sculpt. I like the hoodies he wears. He's very posable. You know, he's very posable. It, it just, it, he represents the channel and the colors and stuff. You know, that's where I kind of got the theme for the channel with the zebra and the bright colors and the yellow, blues, pinks, and it all ties together with the black contrast. Really, really enjoy Dolph Ziggler's work. Of course, he's one of my favorites as well, but also just his figures are so damn good, and if you know, you know. Really fun to pose around. I had to include it there, so yeah, there, there's Dolph Ziggler. And rounding out the list, guys, we have to go with Seth freaking Rollins, right? You had to go with Seth freaking Rollins. You couldn't leave off Seth freaking Rollins. There's no way you couldn't, and specifically the Elite 45, and uh, you know, I, I could say Elite 45 or I could just say the regular, but I have so many of this figure, and it's because it's just so good. I love looking at it. I love Seth Rollins. I love the white gear. You guys know that white is my favorite color. I like the fantasy attires and stuff. Making different, you know, fix-ups and things with Seth Rollins figures are fun. His figures are really good to pose around. Like, he's on ball joints and everything like that. His head sculpts keep getting better. He's just really, really fun to pose around. He's really fun to uh, get in there creativity-wise, and that's where a lot of these figures rank for me, because because the Finn Balors, the Jeff Hardys, the Seths, the Dolph Zigglers, the John Cena's, and everything, mixing and matching parts is really is my favorite part of collecting WWE figures and making the customizations. The whole part and reason behind WWE action figure surgery is because we can take a figure that looks okay, but then we can use our brains to switch parts 
plug and pop, heat it up, add a black line, add a white layer, touch it up here and there, and create a whole new beautiful figure, whether it's fantasy gear, whether it's accurate, making it better, upgrading the figure, putting together Frankenstein efforts to make new looking figures and stuff is my favorite thing ever. And then when you can pose it around and not worry about paint chip and things of that nature, and then posing and put them in the pig fed to make it look like a brand new universe and a brand new attire, it's just super, super awesome to me, and that is just so epic and what makes wrestling figure collecting and wrestling figures so effing amazing and pick fetting and creation and, and just content creating and being creative. I mean, I love it. I love that so much and that is what, uh, that's a big driving force and I love you guys for it as well. But that is my top five to seven figures that I couldn't live without, I guess. But I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Let me know what your top five figures are ever or what five figures you couldn't live without or just whatever the case is, Brad. I would love to know down in the comment section below. This list really wasn't that hard to make, to be honest with you, because uh, all these figures are so great. I'm shooting for probably Friday or Saturday for the full collection video. We'll have to see about that. I'm going to be out of town all day today, and then therefore I wouldn't be able to film and post for tomorrow, so there's that. But anyways, guys, I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your things are. Let's get into our random shout-out. So for this random shout-out, guys, it's going to go to Nathan Allard, or Allard, or Allard. He says, love how he pretended he was on the phone laughing, crying emoji, referring to our toy hunt yesterday. If you guys missed that, definitely go check out the toy hunt. It was very epic sauce. You're not going to want to miss that. I was talking to myself in my car. You definitely don't want to miss it. But thank you for it. Thank you to Nathan. Shout out to you, bro, for the comment. If you guys want a random shout out in a future video, leave me a comment. Turn on the bell for notifications as well as subscribing when you do that. Leave me a comment and maybe you could be shouted out in a future video. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line.